Welcome to the Royal College of Organists A to Z of the organ. This video covers the letter E, E for expression. Igor Stravinsky famously called the organ the monster that never breathes, and it's certainly the challenge of the organist to breathe life into our music making at the console. Sometimes it's tempting to think that the swell box is the cure-all, or that by changing stops regularly we can make the music more interesting. But the history of expression points to a more nuanced art. I want to start with the 17th century doctrine of the affections. This theory of aesthetics was widely used in Baroque music, and the French philosopher Descartes held that there were six basic affects – admiration, love, hatred, desire, joy and sorrow. Connecting this thinking to what we find in the music of the period is helped by the writing of Johann Mattheson, one of the greatest proponents of the doctrine of the affections. He says, An expansion of the soul is represented by large intervals, while sadness is conveyed by the smallest intervals. Pride and arrogance are depicted by a pompous musical style, and anger or vengeance, whilst noisy and bold, should have a becoming singing quality. Something to think about when you next sit at the organ to play a piece of books to Huda. In the 18th century, the sensitive style was designed to express true and natural feelings. J.S. Bach's two sons, C.P.E. and W.F. Bach, are remembered as leaders of this style, and their music is characterised by sudden contrasts of mood, an abundance of precise ornaments, use of sighing appoggiaturas and melodic and harmonic chromaticism. For players, this music demands imaginative pacing, subtle phrasing and articulation, and the bold use of an 18th century registrational scheme. When we think of Romanticism at the organ, we're perhaps drawn to the music of Reubke, Liszt, Franck, Vienne, Parry or Elgar. The French style of playing at the turn of the 20th century owed much to the influence of the piano, and much can be learned by listening to pianists like Alfred Cortot. Composers pursued an absolute legato, which transferred well to the organ with its clear sustaining capabilities. Careful fingering, gently overlapping notes, not lifting the hands at phrase ends but relying on rubato as punctuation, observing notes commune and controlling the swell box, being faithful to registrational conventions, all contribute to an expressive effect. Much of what I've been talking about refers to historically informed performance practice, and when interpreting the past we are rightly conscious of treatises and research, but I hope by highlighting composers' preoccupation with communication and emotion over hundreds of years that we gain some confidence as performers to express our own feelings and, most importantly of all, to move the listener. Look out for the next video in the series, The Letter F.